So I'm just gonna open with prayer and I'm gonna share with you kind of um, this message that I've just been pondering. I really don't have a, a great explanation of the scripture or an extra Jesus to give you of this scripture, but I just wanna take you on this journey of me unpacking this particular chapter and I don't have all the answers, so maybe the Holy Spirit will speak to you and, and give you some revelation on this particular scripture that I'm hoping he gives me by the weekend so I can actually teach it at the conference. But, um, so let's just open with prayer. Lord, we thank you, you are so faithful. You are so gracious. We bless your holy name. Lord, come and glorify your name today. Lord, I ask you to come and give us ears to hear and eyes to see today. Holy Spirit, I ask you to open our hearts that we may receive your words, that you would come and reveal Jesus to us today, that you would come and highlight the scriptures to our hearts, Lord, that each person would receive the word that they need to hear tonight for the situation that they are facing. And Lord, we bless Bishop Ron even tonight, Lord. We ask you to give him sweet sleep tonight, Lord. We ask you for a hedge of protection around him, Lord. And Lord, we ask you to give him clarity of why you sent him and what he's there to do. We ask you for divine appointments, Lord, that you would truly do exceedingly and abundantly above anything we can ask, hope, or pray. And Lord, we'll be ever so careful to give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. So I've been pondering this on my way. What is this on my way to healing? What is this process, this journey to healing that we take? And, and we are all in need of some type of healing, whether it's physical healing, emotional healing, spiritual healing. Some of us are, are, are bruised and crushed in our spirit. And that's one of the deepest wounds that you can receive. And so I just, I've been really just praying about this, and when we were in India a week or two ago, uh, Joy preached a message on the loaves and the fishes, about bringing your loaves and your fishes to the Lord, bringing what you have to the Lord and letting him multiply it. And so I've been kind of just pondering that scripture. So turn with me, if you would, to Mark chapter 8. And I'm actually going to read uh, verse 22 when, when Jesus healed the blind man. So Mark 8, chapter 22, it says, Then when he came to Bethsaida, Bethsaida, and they brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. So he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands on him, he asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up and said, I see men like trees walking. Then he put his hands on his eyes again and made him look up and he was restored and saw everyone clearly. Then he sent him away to his house saying, neither go into the town nor tell anyone in the town. And so I thought this was, I've been pondering this. I don't, I don't have any answers. I don't even know why this is in the Bible. And so I've just been asking the Lord about this particular blind man. So uh, here it is in this scripture. Jesus is in this town. He comes to this town. And there's this blind man and his friends bring him to Jesus. And the scripture says they beg Jesus to lay hands on him. They beg Jesus to heal him. And I thought that was interesting. That here is his friends and they're, they've heard the stories of Jesus. And Jesus had already fed the 5,000. He had already broke the loaves of bread and, and they'd heard the stories. 
and the sky had already opened when Jesus got baptized and, and the heavens spoke and said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. And you know, they didn't have cell phones back then. And they didn't have social media and Facebook and Snapchat. So they told stories. And if you ever heard fishermen tell stories, you know they can exaggerate. <laughs> so I imagine, yeah, it was this big. So I can imagine the stories they told about Jesus. So when he came to this town and these men had already heard about Jesus and they bring their friend, this blind guy, and they beg him to heal him. And if that wasn't enough, Jesus takes the man by the hand and leads him out of town. So you gotta take this journey with me because I, I, when I read stuff like that, I actually picture it. So here is this man, he's blind. And he's in his hometown where he grew up. That means, you know, when you're blind, when you lose one of your senses, all your other senses, senses become more heightened. So you know smells and you know sounds. So this man was familiar with things in this town. And I'm sure he had heard the stories about Jesus and how he healed people and how he delivered people. And here is his friends bringing him to Jesus and begging to be healed. And so many times we find ourselves begging the Lord to heal us or begging the Lord to heal one of our friends. And here it is Jesus takes the man by the hand and leads him out of town. So you gotta understand, he's leading him past his house where he's familiar. He's leading him past the bakery where he smells the smells. And he's taking him out of his comfort zone. And here is his friends looking. So people are coming outside and they're seeing this man walking with Jesus and he's still blind. So they're like, look at him, he's with Jesus and he's still not healed. And here it is, the disciples who were always murmuring and complaining and arguing with each other. Well, I'm, I'm Jesus' favorite. He likes me the best. And so I imagine them saying, what is Jesus doing? Where are we going now? And Jesus is just taking this man on a journey. He's on his way. And this man is blind. He doesn't know where Jesus is taking him. But he can smell and he can sense and he can hear and he knows he's leaving his comfort zone. Because I'm sure he knows all the roads and he knows all the places. And here it is Jesus pulling him on this journey. He's just walking with Jesus. He's with the Son of God. He's with the man who turned water into wine yet he's still blind and Jesus is walking him past his friends. And I'm sure the disciples is like, who sinned, his mother or father? Because back then they understood generational sin and generational curses. Because many times they would ask Jesus, you know, who sinned? And he would say, neither. There was one time he asked and he said, neither one. But this is for the glory of the, the father. So sometimes you can be walking with Jesus and still blind. Sometimes you can do, follow all the principles and all the things in the Bible and still not get your healing. And so I've been pondering this like, why is this here? It makes no sense. And so I'm still asking the Lord, why is this particular chapter this man being led outside of town, out of his comfort zone, out of his familiar surroundings. And I'm sure the theologians can tell you about the city of Bethsaida 
and how Jesus didn't like the city anyway and how before that chapter it was the Pharisees and the Sadducees who were begging for a sign and he said, I'm not gonna give y'all a sign. This generation is always looking for a sign. And he told them they weren't gonna get a sign. So here it is, he's leading this man after his friends have begged him to be healed. Jesus still doesn't heal him. Then he leads him out of town out of his comfort zone, out of his familiar surroundings, away from his family and his friends. And sometimes Jesus will take you on a journey. Sometimes he'll take you out of your comfort zone. To heal you. Because we don't know what we need healing for. And you know, the Lord will break the rules to heal you. So Jesus leads this man out of town and then he spits on him. He spits in his eye. You ever get something in your eye? You know when you get something in your eye and you're blinking? You ever see a kid get something in their eye? And the first thing they say is, I can't see, I can't see. And what does mom do? Mom starts blowing in the kid's eye, like blow his eyeball out. (sighs) I can't see. But what amazes me about this story is Jesus spits in this man's eye and says, what do you see? And what the thing that stuck out to me was he didn't say it's a little blurry. It's a little unclear. The man says, I see. And that was key to me in that whole scripture. He says, I see. He was blind, but then he saw. Jesus spits in his, which is unnatural for somebody just to spit in your ear and you can see. Because if, if, if some water gets in your eyes, you can't see. So the man says, I see men like trees. And here it is, the Son of God, the Son of Man, Jesus of Nazareth. The one who came to set captives free, the one who came to open the eyes of the blind, the one who sits on the throne now had to lay hands on this man or chose to lay hands on this man a second time. And says, what do you see? But first he says, look up. And then tell me, what do you see? And it says the man saw clearly. So I've just been pondering this chapter of Jesus, of on this journey with Jesus and not being healed. On this walk where people are talking about, oh, this person is walking with Jesus and they're still sick. Where's the open door? What's going on? But here it is in the Bible. This man walked with Jesus. Walked through the town, walked past his friends and family. On a journey with Jesus, on his way. So I just want to encourage you tonight to keep walking with Jesus. He is the way maker. And he'll make a way and he'll break the rules to get you healed. He's not confined by our rules and our religion and our methods. But the Lord has a unique method that he wants to use to get you healed. But you have to be willing to walk with him out of your comfort zone. Maybe out on a limb, away from your family and your friends, even as they talk and you walk with Jesus. Even as they gossip and tell stories. 
You have to keep on walking. You have to stay on the journey. And if he chooses to spit in your eye, you have to let him. You have to be willing to surrender and trust the Lord. Because you don't understand when someone is blind and everything is dark. You ever walk through your house in the dark and hit your foot? I know some of y'all cuss, it's okay. (laughs) But you're walking through the dark and you're feeling your way. But you have to get to the place where you say, Lord, I trust you. I don't know where I'm going. I can't see my next step, but I trust you. Everything's dark, but I know I'm with Jesus and it doesn't matter. I'm uncomfortable. I'm being attacked, I'm being talked about. Not only was this man spit on, but he was spit on by Jesus. And you think you have it bad. But you have to keep walking. And you have to keep trusting that he has the answer because he is the answer. So it doesn't matter what it looks like, it doesn't matter what it feels like, and it doesn't matter if you don't know where you're going or when the healing is coming, but you know it's coming. So I just wanna encourage you in that tonight to keep on asking, to keep on trusting. The Lord is gonna do what he promised because he said it, because he's faithful to himself. He'll do what he promised. So whatever you're believing God for, you need to just say, Lord, I trust you. Lord, I can't see it. I don't know where it's coming from. But I know if you got to spit, you'll spit. And if you got to split the Red Sea, you'll split the Red Sea. Because he's able. And he says, with God, all things are possible for him who believes. So I want you to be encouraged tonight that God is for you and not against you. And he has a plan, and you just have to keep trusting him and walk in with him. Stay on the journey. Stay on the road with Jesus. Even if you have to leave everybody else behind, even if it it doesn't look pretty, keep trusting him, and you will see what he has for you. So, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you watch over your word to perform it, Lord. And Lord, I just ask you just to continue to give us revelation, Lord, about being on our way with you, about being on this journey to healing with you, Lord. And Lord, I give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' holy name. Amen.